Hi everyone, welcome to the Inspired by You Mindkite podcast. I'm Jamie Kerr and joining me today, I have an amazing, inspirational guest for you. His name is Ash Edelman, but Aussie to his friends. Welcome, Ash. <laughs> How are you doing? Thanks, Jamie. I'm doing really good, mate. Really, really good. Couldn't be happier, actually. <laughs> Yeah, listen, it's great to have you on, and I'm, I'm instantly jealous of what I can only see as a, just an idyllic <laughs> background. An idyllic. There you go. Wow. Wow, well, I'm, well, I'm here in the UK, I'm here in the UK, and we're under full lockdown at the minute, and I can see you've got the top off, you've got your muscles out, and you've got that beautiful background, you're in. You're in a very nice place, and uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, Mate, we're in, we're in Copenhagen in Thailand, so we're over uh, the quiet side of the island, and it is it's beautiful out here. It is it's it's everything. You can wake up in the morning, you have nature around you. Even now, you can hear all the cicadas and everything else going on. It's beautiful. It really is. Oh, that's that's brilliant. It looks it looks great. So the reason why I'd actually invited you on to the podcast, our podcast is all about sort of mindset, mental health, and and inspiring stories and. I'd been in a couple of rooms on a on a, a different app um, called Clubhouse, and um, I, I'd heard you speak, and I, it takes a lot for me to be inspired, and I was really inspired just by your journey, and I don't even want to spoil it, so I would really love it if you could sort of tell the viewers in your own way about your, your journey, even as far back as you like to go, but um, definitely about all the wow. travel and, and, <laughs> and circumstances you've been in. Okay, um, it was actually, I, I spoke this story last night on Clubhouse, actually. Um, well, going back, I think it was 2011. Um, I was, I just left the army. Um, I was the Australian army for five years and I kind of had nowhere to go. Like I spent all my money every fortnight that I got it. Like I was that guy who literally lived paycheck to paycheck and I was, I, I literally had nowhere to go. I managed to get a job in Western Australia so in the mines, working in the iron ore mines, um, work on the train lines. So there was like a three in one roster. I was uh, working for three weeks. I had a week off. Like the money was good. Like at that age, I think I put, it was about 160,000 Australian in that year. And for someone at the age of 21 who just got out of the army, I was like, oh my God. But I had no idea of money manage management. Like I came home for my first week home and said to all my mates, we're going out and paying for everything. I dropped $3,000 in one night. The lady behind <laughs> the lady served me behind the bar. Literally, I walked up and asked for a bottle of tequila and she sold it to me for like three hundred dollars. So that's how bad I was. Um I think I was and one of my mates. Sure. <laughs> but that was it. Like we had to go through that stage. Like I look back at it now, the shit we got up to. Sorry for swearing. What we got up to was it was all a part of the learning process. Like, yes, at the time you were going, I wish I kind of didn't do that, but those moments I look back now and I'm like, I'm so glad I'm not that person anymore. So it's helped me develop. Um, but yeah, well, I was working in the mines and my friend kind of saw us going through a bit of troubles with a girl and was like, dude, you need to leave. Like you need to sell everything you have and go, go to go to the UK. He done, he lived in the UK a couple of years beforehand. And he's like, you need to try it out. You need some life experience. So I sold everything I had um, and I basically got a two year visa for the UK, but I went traveling for the first three months. So um, I literally spent all of my money <laughs> and, and went home. Like I, I went traveling, I, I did it hard. Did you, spend, did, you spend <laughs> um, the, did you spend all this money during the traveling period? Not even- Oh yeah. <laughs> I know I spent it all. Like I literally landed in the UK for a night. I think I went out for a weekend and we jumped straight across to Munich and went to Oktoberfest. Ah, like okay. I, I hit every single party place that I could. And it was again, I needed it. Um, once I spent my money, I went home kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I kind of got, I had a bit of a Bitcoin story because I bought Bitcoin very early, but um, a lot of it, the company I tried to withdraw with, they actually ended up losing uh, like over a billion do dollars worth of coin. So I lost a lot of money through it, but I'm thankful because if I'd kept that money, I was going to go back to Australia, not come back to the UK and start a business. Right. Thankfully, my parents were like, no, 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 you, you're going back. We're not, we're not leaving you here. You're not staying here. You need to go because you're not wasting opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So I got a job. Well, this is it. I, I said, if you get a job, we'll pay for your flight. So my mate actually got me a job as a stripper down in Cornwall. Right. And I tell you what, it was, I made about 300 quid in three months. 
it was terrible. Like I make no money. Not big money in the stripper game. The, in Cornwall, no. Right, right. cool. And you, it was. Were you in this even, condition like, because you, you're you're in great condition? I can see. Were you? Is that part of the stripping thing? You know, getting in good condition. Yep. Yeah, well, at the start, it wasn't. At the start, it was just a way to get back over here. But when I moved up to London, I got a, I got offered a photo shoot, which was actually a scam. And they charged me 600 quid for some shithouse photos. Sorry, again. Um, but those photos got me a job with a group called Forbidden Nights. And when I first joined those guys, I was uh, working 50 quid on the weekend. That's all they had, the only shows they had. But it was, I basically got in there and I wanted to be a part of it because I I loved everything these boys were doing. Like it wasn't just stripping. It was Magic Mike with Cirque du Soleil. It was pure skill mixed with some cheeky dance and all that sort of stuff. And you didn't get everything out. So it was it was so appealing. And they actually said to me, he's like, yeah, we, I'm sorry, we can't take you on. And I was like, dude, I'll work for free. I don't care. Like, I love what you have here. I want to be a part of this because I see something happening. Um, next thing you know, like, I needed another job, so I started personal training in New Barnet and started trying to make ends meet that way as well. Eventually, I think about four months after I started working with these guys, um, they found out I could do I could perform with fire. So they saw me mess around one of the fire staffs. So they're like, we didn't know you could do that. So um, actually, funny enough, about two weeks later, their fire performer left. <laughs> Right. So, so I got I went from setting up chairs and hosting to learning how to dance. Now I'm a rugby player. I have two left feet. I can sidestep like anyone. But the second you put me on stage with choreo to do choreography in front of people, I am going to freeze. And I I did. I I was freaked out, but it took me a while to get used to it. Now the stage is my home. The stage is the mo is a place that I feel so comfortable and passionate. And could you tell me a little bit about that about that journey? Just I, I think like, you really underplayed that there because I've seen some of your videos and some of your performance. And anybody that, that watches or listens to this, you know, go and check Ash out on his socials and, and see some of those sort of performances. And you're saying that you 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 know you had the two left feet and stuff like that, or you you know you only knew the basic yeah. side step, but then you learned that. So you tell me a little bit about yeah. about that process and the sort of mindset that, that got you to be the good performer that I've seen you are now. Okay, so I um, I it took me what three weeks to learn the chorus of a routine. Like this is how bad it was. I was three weeks. I think I did five hours a week, and it was it was horrible because I couldn't dance. And my choreographer, um, he he saw me. He saw the want that I had for it. So we'd choreograph it. We'd film it, and I would go home and I'd rehearse in the shower. My brother used. To live with me in the uk he'd catch me rehearsing in the bedroom like any chance that i had in the gym in between a set is i'd be going through the motion like the only music i'd ever listened to through that point in time was what was going on for the show like i immersed myself in it because because i came from australia i had no idea of i had no i had no family i had nowhere to fall back on like i was literally living on a mate's couch at this point in time in finchley and trying to find a place and it was it was crazy because I, it was all or nothing for me. Yeah. Like yeah. Now, if I'm honest, going back and you asking me this question is that kind of realization of, oh shit, you have done a lot. Like I'm one of those people, yes, I've done a lot, but I, I, it doesn't register. It's only these moments where I go, wow. And like, I think that's why I'm doing this sort of stuff. Cause it's important that I think that like when I hear someone and they, they speak inspirationally and, and inspire me, like your story has, I thought, I need mm. to get that out and, and tease these parts out because it's it's not just good for the audience, but it's also good for yourself to actually realise, you know, without all yeah. that risk, you know, you wouldn't have had all the reward that, that I've heard about and seen yeah. now. So I think it's really important yeah. to understand, you know, all of us as humans, we need to understand our journey, you know? Yeah, 100%. This is the thing. Those things, from being in the army and learning discipline the way I have, it, it's helped me in other aspects of my life. So when it comes down to that... Um, I, when I get focused on something, I will focus. I will stay on that and I will do it. Just like rehearsing, because that was it. I was, like, we were on Britain's Got Talent. This is the thing. We were on Britain's Got Talent in 2014, I think it was. We came on as crew, then surprised everyone, took our shirts off and basically stripped on stage. Nice. Like, that was my, about two months into learning to dance. And that was the biggest stage I've ever been on. That was two and a half thousand people, the judges and cameras. Like, it was 
insane to be on that stage. And from that is, I, I learned quickly. I started really finding my feet to it. And then I actually started bodybuilding. One guy met me in the gym and he was like, mate, you've got a great physique. You should do bodybuilding. So I jumped in, I started doing it. I got, went through my first prep and I didn't realize how I'd be on stage, but having forbidden nights, the being how comfortable it taught me to be on stage, to be shirtless in front of people and to be cheeky on stage has helped me in bodybuilding. Yep. I've been able to go on stage and like I, I met a guy on uh, Clubhouse who's become one of my best friends is he saw me compete about three years ago and he said the one thing that drew him to me on stage was the fact is I I step on stage and that's mine I don't care I'm there to own that stage and that was it he goes you had it on stage you had great physiques around you but your performance held it all and it's when I hear things like that that's like okay that's where my passion like well obviously with COVID due to COVID that's where my passion used to lie that would was everything. Like to, I would you like to free. break into that a little bit about the about the bodybuilding because yeah. I mean I go to the gym and I, I just do some sort of normal workouts and I was I do a lot of physical at boxing and things like that. Um yeah. and I really admire and respect, you know, bodybuilders and the mindset behind bodybuilding and what it actually takes, you know, with the with the diet and the training. But there's another side to it. Yeah. I didn't mention the competitions and I see there's people that go in my gym and they're in the studio more than they're on the weights and they're practicing yeah. the poses and, and they're breathing yeah. and things like that. And I'm just wondering if you could sort of elaborate a little bit because that's a side that people don't really understand. There's, there's a whole performance aspect to what you do. Yeah, well, this is it. It's, it's, you look at it like a work of art. So I used to compete in muscle model and the good thing with muscle model is I could have the flowiness of a physique, but I could also have the rigidness of a bodybuilder. So I was kind of that thing, that weird place in the middle. And it allowed me to then take my own performance from Forbidden on the stage to show what I could actually do. But you have to make it all blend. Like you can hit a pose, bang, bang, whatever it may be. But that's positioning between that transition is everything. It's the slowness, it's the drama, the, the dramatic side of it. It is how you feel, but how comfortable and confident you feel in the moment you're doing it, which then people then are able to feel that because you're owning that no matter what even if you mess it up you don't stop and you just have fun with it like this is it everything we do should be fun and if you can have fun in that sort of stuff and enjoy it it's it's amazing but it does it takes hours like you could be standing in front of in a in a studio for an hour two hours a day doing one simple transition like, it, it's not going to look right here. It's not going to look that right there. You've got to get up. You've got to film it. You've got to take different angles. You've got to do everything to make sure it works. But that can all get blown when you step on that stage because, unfortunately, a lot of people, they get the excitement for it, but they haven't had the chance to be in that position on stage. So they, they go deer in headlights. Yeah. Like, you've worked 12 weeks. You've put yourself through so much torment with like mentally physically like temptations you've gone through all of this and the last six seven even ten days can be the absolute hardest where people break and you see that on stage regularly people will get there and they will deer in headlights and freeze up so it's putting that time in being comfortable with your posing with your routine and understanding that you've got this like people are there to watch you people are there to appreciate what you've done over this point in time you it only damages yourself by self-sabotaging going into that going oh no i don't want to mess it up i don't want to mess it up i can own it own everything what sort, what you do when tips, you step on the stage. what sort of tips do you have for you know that that sort of incident like a, a deed in the headlights what what would you say to try and sort of counter that not once it's happened but to try and prevent it from happening because i've seen some of your performances and you're you're very you, you yeah. seem to come across very confident with it you know yeah, I, I think at the start, I used to do a thing called, it's a bee buzzing breath. So it's called um, Ramari Pranayam. And it's like, uh, it helps trigger the parasympathetic nervous system to help you calm down. So by going through and doing a breathing exercise before you step on stage, and even just standing backstage and having just talking to everyone that's around, if you've got that vibe, because this is the thing, a lot of people look at bodybuilders and go, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, those kind of people. It's like, Everyone is so friendly. I'm standing backstage with everyone, jumping around, having a laugh with people like, step on stage, it's going to be great. And I'm just having a, having a ball with it. 
And I, I do that to try and help other people feel a lot more comfortable and relaxed to know that there's someone who's absolute stupid going on stage about to have fun with it. Like if that, if me can, if I can help give people that confidence, that's amazing. And I, it has, at last show, I think the last show I did in Poland, the guy came up to me and he was like, mate, you're, you helped me so much. He was peeking, standing right behind me. And I stood around, gave him a bit of a pep talk and slapped him on the arms and he, he actually won. He, he, he actually he beat me. And I was like, fair, fair play. <laughs> so <laughs> it worked. Yeah, I think that's like similar to the story um, with like Ronnie Coleman the night before one of his big competitions that he'd won and he was given some a slice of pizza and a couple of shots of vodka and I think the alcohol would strip him right down and he, he went on to, I think, win six after that, you know? Yeah, him and Kevin Lerone, that was one. <laughs> yeah, so you... you... But, th- but that's it, is having that, having that looseness, having that flow of you when you're on stage is perfect I, mate i have a shot like that before i step on stage i i have i have a shot before i step on stage. i don't even drink but it just helps you kind of just central yourself before you go on. On no listen it's absolutely f- um, fantastic some Every. of your performances and what's what do you think your, your sort of best experiences have been from sort of competing so far because i know you're, you're probably still going to do more are you yeah so i'm actually so I'm with my new coach at the moment. We're uh, doing my first ever bulk. This is the thing. I've never been able to bulk because of the show. I had to always be in shape. So now I've um, I've got myself to the leanest and the heaviest I've been so far, which I'm about 98 kilos. Um, but yeah, we're looking to pre- looking to compete probably Q4. So anytime end of August towards the end of the year, really. Because my goal, I'm actually, I've, I've got my eyes on a 2022 Olympia invite which means I've got, a pro- I've got a process. I've got to literally get a show, get a pro card. Sorry, either do an amateur Olympia and then get the pro card that way and then compete for a pro show that's offering the invite or go the way of regional or this stuff. Either way, I could be doing two or three, maybe more because I've got my fire back for it. I felt, my fire fell off a little bit after my whole visa problem um, going back about two years ago. It just... That's a story on its own. Um, I lost a lot of weight through it. I lost about 10 kilos just due to stress. And I took some time off. And I was only doing the competitions last year. And not only that, my wife came up to me and was like, she saw me get off stage and she was like, nah, nah, you're, you're doing another one. You're going again. And to see the support that she, that I've got from her behind me to do it has really fired me the hell up. So I've, I will go anywhere I have to this year to get that pro card and to get that invite. And just for anybody watching this, um, the Olympia is, is one of the biggest competitions in the world for, for bodybuilding. Would I be right in saying that? Yeah. The Olympics of bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So obviously it there's is. a lot of education that comes with that, um, your diet and, and, and things like that. How do you prepare for that sort of mentally? And how do you educate yourself and all that sort of stuff? Um, well, for myself, as I said, I'm, I'm a coach. So I've, I kind of fell into that from a lot, uh, very young age. Um, really just kind of for the fact of playing sport that I thoroughly enjoyed it. But the, I'd say if for people that want the information and the people that want to make the change, hire a coach. My God, hire a coach. The, way, the reason why I say that is because there is so much bro science. There is so much nonsense on, on there that today, like I was watching something for an argument that I thought would have gone away. Carbs are the cause of obesity. I would have thought that was something that was, has, has been squashed because there's so much science out behind it, yet it's something that popped up again today and everyone's been raving about it. So you've got so many people out there that are giving you this misinformation that go to one person, research to one person, look at how, if you gel with them, whatever it is, and go to one person and get that solid bit of information because that gets rid of decision fatigue, that gets rid of any error that could come from any multiple different things. If you're getting training advice from one guy, you're getting nutrition advice from the other guy, you're buying supplements because the guy told you you need to take all these, yet you're, you don't know what's actually working. Like you could actually get a, a very good physique with food and training, just the right amount specific to you, calculated, watched, regulated, tracked, all of that stuff. But if you don't know how to do that, you're just kind of going in there, pissing in the wind, hoping that you're going to, do something about it. Yeah, I thought so, I, I thought I, I would ask you that because I've seen some of your um, I've seen some of the work you're doing, I've seen some of the results 
from your clients and results yeah. for me, results speak for themselves. You know, no matter what industry yeah. you're in, your results talk a language you don't even need to you don't even need to say, you know. Exactly. And this is the I'm I'm a I'm a no bullshit sort of trainer is I will I I'm there, I'm empathetic, like it's like okay, I understand this. Like people are human, things happen in life and things have to change, diet meals have to be missed. I mean, if it was someone competing, be a different story. But for regular clients, it's everyone is human, so you have to have that empathetic side. But I won't modicoddle, I will literally tell it to you straight is oh, I can't be doing this because of, uh, people go, oh, I don't get up until seven, so I don't have time. Get up at fucking six. If you want this goal, if it means that to you, you get up at six. Like it's it's these things that people, we're the easiest person to lie to. We're the easiest person to say, oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow, and it never happens. If you become this is this is the biggest thing that I learned after uh, COVID, after performing went, after all of that went, is I had to then move my entire business online, and basically start again because all of my clients wanted people from the um that were face to face so i've had to start again i was going to ask you about and that how, now, did you, how did you manage to you know maneuver from from personal you know training and coaching into that sort of to deal with the pandemic and, and pivot and adjusting yeah. and how did you how did you manage to do that and what was your process there it was just we weren't given any option it was six weeks uh six weeks we partied every, every weekend and we we're like this isn't this clearly isn't going away so what do we do? So I actually took to trading for ages, trying to trying to work on forex trading, and got, I've got something now which is works nicely, which is good. But it was my passion is coaching, my passion is PT, my passion is changing people's lives. So I was like, I need to be able to do this. So I've got my coach, like my wife, has helped me with so much change my business model from what I was to where I am now. And this is the thing she changed her job as well. She's gone from managing an entertainment agency to now literally changing lives as a career change coach like, and absolutely killing it. So she's helped me increase my business, which has been absolutely insane. And again, now that's helped us like where we are now, where we're able to sit here. I can do my work through the day. I can go around the island. I can then like, we went shooting content today to put on YouTube and other stuff. Like it's, it's just, seen, it's, it's nice. I've seen, nice. A, it's I've seen a picture of Thailand today and I was just so, I was just so jealous. Can you tell me about Mate, you speak? You speak about your wife, and I can see you've got so much passion. And I've heard you um, speak about your wife previous. And I'd just like to go back to the sort of travel, and then meeting your wife and how you, you know, you moved forward there. Um, obviously, you know, you, you had to meet at some point, and that was part yeah. of the traveling. Oh no, one sec. Sorry, you literally just froze, mate. You literally just froze. Apologies for that. Yeah, what I was saying was. Um, I see you speak really passionately, you know, about your wife, um, who, who you're with now out in Thailand. And I just want to go back to the travel and the sort of point where you've, you've kind of met your wife yeah. and you're going to that sort of story. I, I think that's a really key part to, to the, of who you've become. Yeah. Probably, you know? Mate, I, I tell you what, is I was, I heard this thing going about years ago. Um, actually, I think it was what Rhea said to me, is there's a thing called first love, second love, and third love. And your first love is basically... When you're a kid, you don't know what love is. You you have that crush on that girl around the corner and it's like, oh my God, she's amazing. She's everything. And oh my God, I love this person. When you're a kid, you have no idea what love is. So that's usually your first love. Your second love is that person who see, you learn from. You learn from the fact of what you don't want in someone. They're the one that gives you the heartbreak. They're the one that really tears you down. They're the ones that change you, but they teach you to know exactly what you want and what you don't want. And the third love is the one that comes that you can't get away from. The one that is absolutely amazing. No matter how hard you try to go be like, no, 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 it's not going to happen. And that's it. Now, don't get me wrong. You can have multiple second loves. You can have multiple first loves. You can have multiple of that. But the premise is, it's that level of growth of finding who you are. And look, me and Maria, she brought me back in 2016, I think it was, on a Bogner Regis job for BP. Me and her became literally best friends at night because we we both looked at each other and we're like without saying it to one another is i thought she was out of my league she thought i was out of her league and we thought we we're just going to be absolute friends because we didn't want to ruin what there was um i she got a relationship i got a relationship with other people and it was only towards like the as soon as my relationship was ending because this relationship was something that i'd gone into a couple of times and i tell you what it broke it broke me quite hard um, I lo really lost who I was, and it was a it was a string of girls that I'd lost who I was. To then have this beautiful woman who's now right steady right there, 
I'm documenting you being cute. Yeah, <laughs> you're documenting me being cute. Um, basically, we, as soon as I split with her, all I wanted was my friendship back because it was, it was the one person who I had this incredible friendship with. And she played, <laughs> she played, uh, she played hard to get for a bit and basically didn't message me back for about a week and a half. And then she messaged me, gave me like a two word answer. And I was like, we should go for coffee and catch up. I think it was about a month later, we finally went for coffee, but literally we kind of, it was like we'd only been apart for about a week because we picked up a conversation that was just like, yo bro, how you been? What's going on? Like we're, we're, we're mates. And are you still filming? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I was just documenting me being cute. Um, but yes, she, we became friends. I think one night, um, we, we'd always had this tension. We used to go to a place called, uh, what was it? Uh, Picks in Portobello. And it was this beautiful tapas restaurant. And I remember she was telling me a story that happened when she was performing overseas. And I remember there's this tension between us, but nothing none of us did everything i think i even described something to her and kind of put my hand on the back of her head and gave her hair a little bit of a tug and i saw the face on her but i was like no this isn't go i'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> stop it <laughs> she's staring at me and just smiling and winking um <laughs> i love you um and this is what i mean yeah this so is, that this not is lovely this this is this is why i had to bring this up because i can see it's such a key part of your growth and who you are now and your energy hey okay, but look she has changed me to me sex used to be a chore with other, every other relationship it was a chore it was something that i always told you're a bodybuilder so everything you've done is you're the reason why you can't do this and it was something that was drilled into me by multiple people and it was brutal and i remember i almost freaked out trying to have just a face-to-face -face conversation with her about it but she made me feel so at ease about what it was and if i tell you what from now till then as harsh as this sounds is i know that i'd never had the issue it was the fact that I wasn't attracted to the other person because of what that it may be. Now, oh my God, this she has helped me become the best version of myself. Like I, you, we, we finally, I had a party at my house, basically, and this is before we got together. And she goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, me and my brother having a party at mine. And he, she's like, I'm in an Uber on the way. And she could literally turn up to my house, come running towards me. And that entire night, it was just hanging around each other. Like it was, it was, there was tension there, but nothing happened. And then we literally stayed up into the wee hours of the morning. We ended up ordering. I had a, something with a, with the right stuff on TV. I had a little uh, phone conversation with him. And then we got up and spent the day cuddling in onesies. I had to re we had a rehearsal that night because I had to go perform on Big Brother the following day. And next, you know, we kissed and we haven't been apart since. It was, it was literally that we had the conversation. We don't want to do we do this, we don't want to ruin it. It was like we're good friends, what do we do? And we did it, and it was the best thing we've done. Like take me from your take me from your journey, um, from Portobello and and, and and London and things like that to <laughs> well, I mean you're in Thailand, so there must have been some sort of transition point in between there. Well, look, we when we got when we first got together, um, that was the year my visa was kind of running up. So what we what we'd done is we'd gone for a trip to Thailand for my birthday. She'd surprised me after a competition, and I fell in love with this island. She's been here many years. She's been coming here for many years, but I fell in love with this place. So what we did was our first big step as a couple, which we basically moved overseas for four months, five months to Thailand together within our first year and be together. Now that was a that was massive because we both go on, let's do this. And for her for her to go, I'm going to come with you. I want to come with you was massive to me and we then had uh what's the name I, my visa i had to go back to australia for another three months she then came back to the uk so we went from living together in a different country to then being apart for four months to then finally coming back finally coming back and um we got married uh which was which was amazing like we had a little uh, 300 pound wedding at uh brent uh, city council and it was the best thing ever we had our closest friends my parents flew over like we had it was just this little impromptu wedding it was absolutely incredible Ruby, I, lo I love you, so I love you. i'm getting so passionate what, about was, your, what, was, what was your main yeah. part so, <laughs> what was your key factors for i mean you've 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 met your one now and then suddenly you're a part yeah. of four months 
So how did you manage to work that and cope with that and, and just give any advice for anyone doing a sort of a long distance relationship? It was it was difficult. It was it was really hard because we were we were literally we'd gone from living in separate houses to literally living together and being together every single day. And we de you develop that connection. And after we developed that connection, being able to be torn that far apart, but know that we were still only fresh in a relationship was it was difficult because there were, there were still things that it, you still go through little teething issues. And the biggest thing was no matter what is neither of us were going to give up. We, all we had to do is we had, we had to work on what our little teething issues were. And this has been the big development for us. Like we use an app called Relish. Like we, we went through lockdown and we were like, um, relationship counseling, that no bad thing. It, it, if anything, it's like every coach has, a, every good coach has a coach. Yeah. I, Why I not if you want to build your, yeah, build your strong relationship, build it stronger. So we use this app called Relish daily and it helps bring the uh, the issues that might be floating around, brings it to the surface and you can literally have this conversation with each other in a non-threatening way, which has been amazing. And we've been listening, learning everything about relationships and listening to certain people and coming out every time there's an argument it's a it's a growth factor from us because we grow from it we stop and we've realized certain things like a state change um what is it is if things get a bit heated yeah i love this yeah if things get a bit heated get upside down get upside down put your butt in the air and do a yoga pose and if you want to really spice it up get your butt out and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. that but that that breaks the moment of the state change exactly. and just Exactly, and that alone, as you stop it, you laugh. You're like, okay, cool. Let's talk about this. And I so, think people don't. I think people don't um, value coaching as much as you could. They think coaching is always mm. when you need to fix something, but coaching can actually mm. make great or or good great. You know, it can make it can yeah. make something even better next level. And I, I mean, I've got yeah. I've got life coaches. I've got mentors for marketing. Um, I, I've got coaches for various things because. I want to be better and give better. And I think, I think you've hit the nail on, yeah. on the head there and you just have a nice relationship clearly, you know? Yeah, that, that's it. Is everything we want to do is we, we, we know is she's going to be the only one to push me around in a wheelchair when I'm old and I can't walk my bum and I'll be the same for her. Yeah. Okay. Is this live? We age recording. Yes. Fuck. I'm so, so sorry, but you've got to turn to the left and look at that. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, have a look at this. Fucking hell. Oh, watch out, you're swearing. <laughs> That's the moon. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you're Scottish. I thought swearing would be okay. I'm sorry. Right, <laughs> listen, it's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Don't worry about yeah. it. Uh, go. Legitimately half Scottish. <laughs> the only reason why I said that. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, this is the thing is we've we wanted to build ourselves and work on ourselves. We've always, both said to each other, we'll always be the people at the end. We just need to build. And this is the thing, we're forever a student in life. We're forever learning. Like there's no, there's no limit to what we can understand and how we can grow with each other. And this is the, this is the thing is no, people don't do this these days. People, I like to call it like the MTV kind of life is they've seen what, Geordie Shaw give. They've seen what uh, Love Island do. They've seen these things which show that people, if you're not happy with someone because you have a little argument, let's go kiss someone else or go somewhere else. People are too easy to just knock a bridge down instead of repairing it. People are too easy to throw something away at the first sign of something that, yes, you, yeah, I love this person, but this one thing annoys me. Well, how about you work at that one thing? Because you could literally still have the, the person you, you love and also fix an issue. But people, people want the quick fix. People think things need to be easy. I've had people literally say, I didn't know you were meant to argue in relationships. I thought if you argued, it's bad. The arguments are healthy because they pave the way. They build the building stones for what you're, how you guys are going to grow together. Yeah, it's an, but, it's an initial sort of airing process. You're airing out a, 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 you know, a difference in thoughts, but it's then how you continue on exactly. from that. Do you, let it, do you let it grow into something negative and huge or do you as you say pave yeah. the way into something positive and have an outcome exactly and this because people don't talk this is what this is what me and josh i think you i'm going to connect you with josh he's someone that you need to speak to um josh is a bodybuilder as well but he's basically changed his ways and changed the, his outlook on life 
and how he is as a person. And I, it has, he's taught me a lot of how I can go forward as a person to analyze myself in a situation that if there is something in the relationship that I'm doing wrong, and I know that's an issue, is if I'm present in that moment to catch myself and start making those changes, I'm able to do that. Yeah. Makes so sense. it's yeah. having those people, he, he's now a mentor to me. So again, I, he's someone you need, you need to speak to, but he's helping me even grow further. And I'm always going to be that student. Yeah, absolutely. I love speaking to sort of inspirational speak, you know, people that and speak inspiringly as well. So absolutely. So you, you, I talk a lot about mental health. Anyone that knows knows Mindkite. It's we talk a lot about mental health and mindset. Basically, every yeah. part of your journey that you've discussed with me has had to involve some sort of growth mindset. Um, I just want to yeah. touch on, and you've, you've been in the army and things like that. So I just want to touch on any sort of yeah. personal experience you may have had through, you know, mental health, or if you can elaborate elaborate a little bit on the sort of mindsets and what's important to you and yeah. your journey. Um, I think one thing that was was with me for a while, which was instilled with me from the army, was um, being able to detach from things. What that helped me and that helped, that served me for a while, but it actually was a big learning point for me of an area that I needed to change. So that being able to recognize what I was doing at that point in time to know that for me to grow and step as a change as a person is I need to consciously make this decision to change it. So I went, went through a stage again, as all young lads do, and you, you, you heard a lot of people on the way with just emotionally because you, you're just a young lad. And I didn't like that person I was being. So for me, that was a big thing to get myself past. Then I went through things of, um, where, where was the next step? Again, traveling. Coming over traveling was the scariest thing in the world because I had no idea where I was going to go. I had no idea what to do. I was literally going to wing every bit of it. And I did. But it was that unknown. I think it was being able to take that ledge and that step forward into the unknown going, mate, this is the only way you're going to grow. Like, I used to, in the mines, you always used to apply for a job in the mines and go, oh, I want a job as a truck driver. And everyone's like, have you had any experience? You're like, no, how do I get experience in the mines? It's like, well, you need experience. But how do you do it unless you try it? So I, I took the leap and I jumped. I went. I was like, I've got to try this thing. And every experience that I've had has helped me grow to who I am now. Like I've been, never been crushed by a truck. That was brutal. Um, I have that. I've had, again, the point I went through a stage from my previous relationship is I went through a state of depression. Like I went dark to the point I was... I, I almost lost my t thing in the UK. I had literally no money left. And this was only going back 20, end of 2017, I think it was, 2017. I was literally bawling my eyes out in my underwear, eating Pen and Jerry's going, what the hell do I do with my life? But that was my next change. That was, the universe will throw at you. Like when you're facing a moment, a, a thing, an obstacle that you have no way forward, everything's closing on you right now, this is it. It's actually the universe showing you your next step to grow. It's being able to embrace that moment and go, okay, what am I learning from this? I, okay, or just grab it and go, you know what? I know this is going to work out in the end with something else. Because in hindsight, you always look back and you go, that's what that was for. I speak about this formula a lot. I, I speak about this formula and I say dis it's disruption. And from disruption comes transformation. And from yeah. the transformation, you're left with a decision or a choice because you transform, yeah. whether you like it or not, you transform in, inside yourself. You're, you're evolving into something. There's an education yeah. there. There's, there's, a, there's a process there that you have to embrace. And then that's what, yeah. what leaves you with the choice. What are you now going to do yeah. with, with that transformation? Are you going to turn your, exactly. your disruption and your pain into a PowerPoint or a power that, that will serve the world and yourself? Exactly. I think exactly. you're a prime example of that, you know. No, thank you, man. I mean, look, the, the biggest thing that I've learned is it's a it's a thing that I use with my clients. It's called it's called my 10-5 rule. But it's that using that rule has helped me make decisions, stick to the decisions, and make a move every time. Tell us, tell us and what, it's what just, that rule is. <laughs> so basically it's it erases decision fatigue. So 
what this is is if you've got if you're you're cloudy you're foggy you have no idea what you're doing with life at the moment you're like okay i, I just don't know which way i'm going I'm, i want to go this way or this way call it which way what's going to have the biggest outcome okay this one cool you made the decision that decision is made then if you're struggling to go towards that you count down from five and you go towards it you don't stop your decisions made and you've literally taken that step forward to it and you follow through with that every time it gets it, it starts off hard it starts off difficult but it's that promise to yourself it's that promise to yourself to go forward every single time and it has it's there are days where you don't want to go to the gym five four three two one boom i'm up i think i heard this the, the original rule was from I think, mel robbins she changed my life with that now i have moments here where even in bed i'm like so tired five four three two one up I'm gonna stand in a cold shower, five, four, three, two, one, in. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do this. Like whatever it is, I take that step. And that has been one of the biggest things of me going forward. I think I seen I think like, I seen Mel Robbins talking on on something similar. And she was saying, motivation's a lot of crap. Just do it. Like you don't need to be motivated, yeah. you just need to do it, you know? Well, this is it. Cl clarity comes from action. With clarity coming from action, you the, the only way you're going to get clear about something is to do it. Absolutely. Like I'm going, th I'm going through, I'm going through something now, which is like another step to the business, which I'm like, I'm, okay, cool, let's go for this. And there are times where I'm like, oh my god, it looks so complicated. But it's like, if there's only one way you're going to figure this out. Click on buttons, let's work it out, let's go our way through. And that's how you build it up and build it up and build it up. And it, it, it snowballs, but you have to be that persistent of going, okay, I'm going to go here this is what i'm starting and let's go even setting alarms on your phone for you get distracted like little bits to help you do it chip away I, i'm not gonna lie i'm not the fastest learner there i I'm, I'm i'm not so there are ways that i have to do it and for me i'm one of those people that learns by doing so i've just got to do the thing yeah i'm i'm the same and, and even myself and my business partner robert heisey but we're, we're very poor at focusing for a long period of time yeah. on things and we have to do things yeah. and, and chip away, as, as you've just said. So you're absolutely, you're, I mean, you're absolutely spot on. And um, so tell me, um, yeah, what does the future hold for you now? I mean, I know you're out in Thailand and I want to talk a little bit about your business you set up. If you want to tell us a little yeah. bit about that, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, future for us. So um, now, as I said, we're both growing our online businesses. I said, beautiful wife, she's doing her um, career change coaching and She's also uh, she's helping me kind of kick my ass to keep myself going as well. It's basically where we want to be is ideally working with 10 to 20 clients max. So we can really focus our energies on those people and really, really make sure we're giving everyone the most attention possible. We've got, as I said, with my business, my side of things, I look from everything from the nutrition through the neurotype training. So I program around what their actual personality is like so they enjoy their training yeah. um I, I i keep everyone checked in with photos making sure everyone is on point i have literally daily things and habits for people to do to start instilling because i don't just want people to learn to get fit for three months and that's it i want to be able to make sure you understand what nutrition is make sure you understand what your training is and kind of how you can do your things but then this is it but also change your mindset people it's a whole different mindset like the biggest thing, which is hard to face sometimes, is if someone doesn't want to do something, they're actually not going to do it. So you can't you can't sit there and try to convince them. If someone does, is in that state, they go, oh, okay, I'll do it. But they're not really in it. They're going to fall out. So I don't work with people like that. I make sure I know exactly who I'm working with. And <clears throat> being able to, being able to, oh, how do I put this? Being able to have that opportunity to be able to actually tailor my clients down to be those helpful people that I want that I know that won't work out is amazing and it's, it's that's a part of the journey um that mindset has also been able to help people in everyday life which is what I want I want you to be motivated in in this I want you to have that mindset of writing a journal doing your gratification doing your affirmations doing breathing techniques doing things to better you giving you self-love and then helping you grow out of that and to your own person with a new form of confidence, yes, a new physique, a new mindset, and a, a, just a new outlook on life. So that, that's that's why that's why I like to do for people because it's it's more than just lifting weights and eating right. 
I think that, um, that that self-love as well that you spoke about, men don't speak about that often enough. And I think it's important. No, like you, no. need, you need to reach in inside yourself and, and self-development and self-worth is massive. You Men need to get in touch with their feminine side. Is, uh, look, a younger me, younger me would not have said this thing. Younger me looks at my Facebook and goes, why the hell did I ever write that? Like younger me didn't have this kind of look at life. Again, being with Maria, she's helped me find who I am sexually which has allowed me to then grow as someone to be very comfortable with who I am. I love Disney films. If we're watching something and there's an emotional scene, if she's bawling her eyes out, I'm usually having, having a cry too. I'm a, I wouldn't really call myself a, a princess or a diva, but I, I, I have my little moments where I can be a bit of a girl. And this is, but this is the thing is I, I, I speak my emotions. If I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry. If I need to talk to someone, if I need to get something out, by God, I will grab you on the side of the street if you're the first person I see that I need to talk to. Like, it's just, men need to be opened. It's th this whole thing of, oh, my granddaddy wouldn't let me do this and my dad didn't do this and they didn't, they didn't get their emotions out. How did their life end up? How were they? Do you want to be like that? Do you want to be that person that isn't able to talk? Because you, you've seen them unhappy yet you're going down the same path. How about you You talk? And this is the good thing about Clubhouse. We get people in there. We have conversations which could lead to anything. We get. We had one yesterday with Freaky Friday with people come in and telling their story. And it led from stories from A to B to some deep emotional stories to a bloke who has literally uh, jumped out of a plane that many times and had his parachute not open. So he's had to use, it's, it was crazy, these stories. And it's given that people that platform to come and talk about it. So I, I, I encourage men to come do it. And I've said this a lot of times and, and I've had outcry before, but I don't actually believe there's a stigma attached to the way men should be. I think it's a, it's the wrong communication. We don't, we don't talk yeah. and we allow ourselves to talk in a certain way. You know, we talk about sports and the boxing and the gym and, and we keep the conversation yeah. so rigid. It's our own fault. It's yeah. not a stigma. We just don't yeah. open up our conversation to more. And it's our, our own you, fault for doing it. You know what? Every man should watch drag. You are RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, every man that. needs to that. watch that. And this is it. I watch it every night with Maria. I'm, I'm literally we're sitting there betting over who's gonna, who's gonna stay. But that alone, the messages that he, that RuPaul gives to people, the stories you hear from these people of blokes who, guys who have gone through absolute hell. And have become that. That alone, if you can watch that and you can. I start to accept people in yourself and go, okay, it is right to cry. It is it's, right to have this emotion. It's funny you touched on that because I actually bought two domains. I bought www.drag.club and I bought www.dragact.club just because of that show. Wow. Just because of that show. <laughs> and um, ah, it's, man, it's good that you brought that up. Okay, so two final questions for you. One of the questions yeah. is, if you could go back to, you know, that 20 year situation or anyone that might be listening that's going through yeah. sort of the stuff you went through. What would your, what would your key yeah. advice be to that person? If you were standing in front of yourself going back 20 years ago? You need to prioritize self-love. Is if you can't, that whole thing, if you can't love, your, uh, love yourself, how you can love anyone else is so true. You need to be happy with yourself because otherwise you're going to go into situations that you're not comfortable in doing and you're going to go into experiences that aren't for you. So you need to give that self-love to you. You need to be able to say no to people. You need to be able to have that energy or have that little spark to go, I'm going to try something different. Because if we stay in our shell and we go and we're too worried about what people are thinking about us or anything like that, we're not going to change. We're not going to evolve. So give yourself self-love and stop <laughs> the big one. Stop worrying about what everyone else thinks of you. Because it really, they, people are mirrors. If they're seeing something in you that they don't like, it's a reflection on themselves. So understand that everyone is on their own journey. Like if you take a moment to actually fully breathe and look at someone that may be acting erratically and be like, okay, cool. Like, I remember a time I was acting radically. I remember I was going through so much and, and I, no one else would have known what it is. You're now witnessing someone doing something like that. Show that compassion to that human and let that, you don't have to like, when you say something to them or not or whatever it may be, understand that everyone is their own person. Everyone's doing their own journey and everyone's got their own shit they're dealing with. So it's having that compassion towards people. I think th those are the sort of areas I'd be around because 
a lot of that wasn't me when I was a lot younger. Yeah, even it even resonates with myself there. So my second question mm. is: a lot of people, a lot of people become shy when it comes to sort of telling their story and and their inspiring stories. Like you, you've come on and you've been quite open and honest about um, about your story, which, as I said, it touched mm. me and I found it inspiring. So what I, I'm going to run in these in these type of podcasts is at the end of it, I'm going to ask you to nominate one person that you think should come on the podcast in the future and tell their version of their inspiring story? My wife. Your wife. Oh, absolutely. Babe, you just been nominated to come into the podcast at some point. <laughs> Is he ready? I know, not, not today, but a different point in time. But yes, there you go, you got your nomination. <laughs> absolutely perfect. Listen, um, thank you very much. I'm absolutely humbled that you've come on and shared your story with us. Um, I'm just going, no, I'm you, going to let you go and enjoy that beautiful background, your beautiful wife, and um, thank you so much. Ooh. I really appreciate it, you coming on, and um, you, you've just been open, honest, and raw, and I feel I got, I got so much out of you there, and I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Jamie. It's been, trust me, it's been amazing. I've really enjoyed being able to come here and talk, and I really hope it helps some people. I, um, I think, well, it's even, and, just, it's even just helped me, just the honesty behind what you've said, so thank you very much, and um, I really appreciate it. Anytime, Jamie. I really appreciate it today. All right, mate. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Thank you, brother. Take Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.